Do you ever think back to the games you used to play as a kid and wonder, were they any good? Why have these franchises or games just died? Why do they lay dormant? Well, that's what I'm looking at today. I'm going back through 10 of my favorite video games growing up and I'm gonna see if, if they still look good. Would I play them today? What do the reviews say? Was I just a dumb kid who didn't know any better? At the end of the day, I did listen to Backstreet Boys. They were my favorite band at the time, so I, I do have some doubts about the games I used to play. Let's dive right in with, with number 10. The order of these like is a bit weird. I've done them by when the games came out. I didn't actually get into this franchise till I was say 12 years old when I went back and started replaying MS-DOS games. I, I'd already had a PS2, I'd had a Sega Saturn. Yes, I was a Sega Saturn kid, we'll get into that. And one of the franchises I got really into was Space Quest. They're made by Sierra. Now, if you don't know Sierra, they made a bunch of games I played. Adventure Quest, they made the Ledger Suite Larry series. That's for a whole nother video, we'll, we'll get into that. But they also made Space Quest. So, so Space Quest was a game that came out initially in 1986. There was six of them all together but the ones I mainly played were one two three and four and then I, I kind of started drifting off towards five and six obviously number one I was playing years after it came out I, I got into these as I said through revisiting older games and then getting back into these now each game has a, a self-contained narrative but you basically play as Roger Wilco a helpless janitor who ended up in ridiculous adventures. I loved the artwork, especially at the time. Like, and I know going back to number one, which wasn't the first one I played, I started off with number three. Going back to number one, the, the visuals look ridiculous. But I was really into the story, I was really into the concept, and I kind of stuck with it. I say stuck with it, I needed to go and find out what to do at every single turn because it wasn't obvious. These games were hard, right? But it is interesting seeing how how it developed. Like we get to Space Crest 3 and, and the visuals had improved, well, I say a lot, maybe not a lot, maybe that's a bit much, but you know, it had improved a bit. As I said before, Sierra actually went on to make six of these games. I lost interest by number three, five and six, well, games that I kind of quickly installed, quickly messed around with. I didn't actually like the art style as much as I as I liked the older ones, and I think part of that is because I was playing these games years later. I had a PS2, I had an Xbox, I was really into The Sims. You know, by the time Space Quest V and VI came out and they were trying to, to make better graphics, it just wasn't what, what I was interested in playing. Not to mention that me going on a journey of MS-DOS games was a bit of a, a dive back into trying to, to find games I'd miss that could potentially be little gems that I had to play. Was Space Quest one of them? Would I replay it? You know, I probably would. I think I'd go back and, and play one of them. What do you think? Do you think the Space Quest franchise needs to come back? Deserves to come back? Would you like to see it come back? Let me know in the comments. Next, we're going on to another game that I loved as a kid. I played this so much. I actually played this before Space Quest. My dad was massively into computers, so he had a bunch of MS-DOS games. I'm talking about Jazz Jack Rabbit, the green rabbit that was as fast as Sonic, but also shot guns, bullets everywhere. I loved this game. I loved it so much. It was made by publisher Epic, Epic Mega Games, not Epic Games. Almost caught me out there. Basically, you traveled through a load of worlds, shooting guns, killing enemies, doing the whole platformer thing, trying to defeat a baddie, trying to save a princess. Yeah, it's it's a storyline we all know, but it was so colorful. I mean, look at these graphics. They were just amazing. Look at the bunny rabbit. There were two of these games. I played both of them. I didn't like the second one as much, and I, I can't really tell you why. It was probably just because the first one I played as a kid, I struggled to get through any of the levels, I don't think I ever completed it, whilst the second one I was revisiting as a 12, 13 year old boy and I just didn't find as much fun. I'd played loads of platformers, it wasn't one that I, I really enjoyed, but saying that it's got a lot of love online, so if it's something you'd like to check out, you, you probably should. Would I replay Jazz Jack Rabbit? Probably not. Unless it's for a video, unless we want to go back and do a revisit of the game and really go into a deep dive of what happened, how it was created, um, why it stopped running, then I, I don't think I'll go back to it. And the main reason is I'm kind of fed up with platformers. Someone's got to do something really new and original for me want to want to try a platformer out. Do you want to see me 
replay some of the Jazz Jack Rabbit games? Do you want to play it? Let me do it down in the comments. And let's go on to the next one. A game that was weird. Even as a kid, I found it weird. Clockwork Night. It came out for Sega Saturn. Yes, I was a Sega Saturn kid. I loved Sega Saturn. I remember my dad taking me to the toy shop to buy my first ever console. I must have been five years old and he wanted me to buy a PlayStation 1. I said, no, I want the Sega Saturn because the box is cooler. Do I regret that choice? I probably did as a teenager, but eventually I got to play PS1 games as well. I had the PS1 later on and I turned into a PlayStation kid later on too. I had the PS2, we'll, we'll cover some of those games, but Sega Saturn was the console that got me into gaming. I'd played MS-DOS games, but that wasn't in my room spending hours trying to complete the level. It was on my dad's computer asking for permission to play for maybe half an hour. Clockwork Night was a demo that came with the Sega Saturn that I got. It was a platformer, but the, the visuals are just really unique and different. You played as, as a night, a clockwork night of all things. You, you literally had your little key in the back and stuff. It was, it was wild. And again, you were trying to rescue a princess from evil. Yeah. The storyline gets a bit repetitive, which is probably one of the reasons these franchise franchises didn't continue. Well, although this is also in the Sega Saturn, which has had its own problems and deserves its own video. But you know, this is probably one of the games where my nostalgia gets the better of me. I've got amazing memories of playing this on the Sega Saturn, of, of spending hours trying to get through these levels that, that I really struggled with because I was so young. Looking back at it, it's a really simple game. And Sega Saturn's focus on 3D gaming meant that this got left behind. It was it was doomed to fail from the moment it launched on the Sega Saturn. There's a bunch of really interesting videos as to why Sega Saturn failed. I'm not going to go into it in this video. I might do it in another video, but there's also incredible videos on YouTube already, so go check one of them out. Would I replay Clockwork Night? No, I'm not going to replay that. Like, and if you want me to, I'll probably say no. I don't think I'll be going back to this game. Like, do you want to go back to this game? Let me know. We're sticking with the Sega Saturn. We're sticking with another platformer. I promise there's other types of games coming up. But platformers, as I said, were a big part of me and gaming as a kid. It's probably the, the easiest type of gaming when you're getting into into gaming for the first time. And this is one that really, really stuck with me as, as unique, something that I really loved. It was Bug. Two games were made. I played both of them. I loved both of them. Again, it's on the Sega Saturn. Again, I've got incredible memories of really struggling with these games, but sticking with them and playing them for so long that I eventually got through them. I remember seeing the Sonic cutscene for the first time and just being completely amazed. I had Sonic 3D on the Sega Saturn 2. Sonic was in this game. What the hell was going on? My life was changed forever. In Bug, you play as, as a little bug, a little green beetle, and you traverse the world as a platformer doing bug things. But the way the characters brought to life, the animations, the colors, the way things splat, the way you jump into bubbles, the way you collect little juice and your little can fills up, like all this stuff just amazed me as a kid. And I still think it stands out as original and unique in this kind of genre. Would I replay it and why did it die? Well, I mean, Sega Saturn, again, that's that's the answer to why why did it die. The answer is Sega Saturn. Would I like to see it come back? Possibly. Like, I think it would be really cool to see Bug come back and, and I think I am going to replay it. Next, we're sticking with Sega Saturn, but we're going for a game that people really do love and, and talk about still to this day. In fact, so much that it had a, it had a bit of a revival. I'm still including it on this list because the franchise, in my opinion, is dead. We're talking about Nights into Dreams, another game that I played so much on Sega Saturn. The game was on the demo disc that came with my console and I begged my parents to get it for me, adding to the cost of, of the two, three games that they'd bought with the console originally. But you know, that was a mistake that you learned from as a kid. Play the demo discs. The demo discs are where the good games are. Don't get, don't get drawn in by the covers. Probably why I ended up with, with Clockwork Night being one of my favorite games as a kid, to be honest. But Nights into Dreams was special. So special that they remade it. Later on, they actually re-released it on PS3, on Xbox 360, and on a bunch of other consoles. And it was a gorgeous game with a really unique 
storyline you would play as a knight, a mysterious jester who's helping kids traverse their dreams, fight off their nightmares. This is stuff that really appealed to me as a kid. You know, I was having my own nightmares. I needed the nightlight left on. I mean, look at these graphics. It was unique. It was different. It was colorful. It was like nothing I'd played before as a kid. And I really loved it. And other people seem to really love it too. It's something that's still talked about to this day. And it is a game that I would like to revisit at some point. Now we're stepping away from Sega Saturn and we're going into one of my favorite franchises ever. I love these games so much. And I wish they'd come back pretty much every week. At least once a week, I turn around and I say to my wife, why is this game not being re-released? We're talking about the NBA Street Series. Now, I was massively into basketball as a kid. I still am. But NBA Street really encapsulated everything I was into as a kid, not just basketball, but the kind of alternative culture that was really into at the time. Hip hop, rock, punk rock, skate culture, all that stuff was kind of encapsulated into this one video game that really, really appealed to me. And and I played it so much. And I'm, I'm specifically talking about NBA Street 1 and 2. NBA Street 3 still had some good things. NBA Street Home Court? NBA Street Home Court completely lost it for me. Why did the franchise die? You just need to go watch a video on this stuff because because it's it's something that deserves its own video completely. I'm not going to analyze it here. There was a load of problems with actually acquiring the licenses. There was a load of problems all over, right? But why was this game so good? I mean, EA Sports Big made a bunch of really cool games of this style at the time like it was just something that was that was in and it really really worked it took a sports game and it made it more fun and that was just something that you wanted from a console the graphics fit especially the era of graphics we were in you know making stuff more cartoony as opposed to more realistic fit the fact that realism sucked at the time in all honesty so this game was something that i spent so many hours playing and 100 percent I'm literally going to go in now and uh, buy a copy so we can replay. We're in for story time now. We're talking about BMX Triple X. Like, I'm going to put a warning here. If you've got kids, you might want to not watch this next bit because uh, BMX Triple X went in and they went in hard and they got in trouble for it. And uh, yeah, the company's not around anymore. Uh, it was made by Acclaim. We'll talk a little bit about a claim. I, th I think it's worth diving a little bit into. But first, let's focus on BMX Triple X. You're a BMX rider going through challenges to become a BMX Triple X champion. Kind of. There was strippers and uh, there was lots of semi topless women all over the place. And initially, Dave Mirror was supposed to be part of this, but. But this is where it all gets weird because Dave Mirror ended up not being part of it and leaving because they added all the nudity and all the weird sexual topics in. I mean, look at this trailer. It was wild, right? So what happened to Acclaim? So it seems that they were heading towards bankruptcy and they made a load of really weird decisions around that time. Let's start with decision number one. They offered to pay someone $10,000, £6,000, if they would name their baby Churok. And this was all to promote the game Churok Evolution that they were releasing. Okay, weird in itself, right? Let's go on, let's go on to weird scenario number two. They attempted to buy space on tombstones to promote the game Shadow Man Second Coming. Okay, this it's getting weird now, right? That's that's weird. It's not just me that finds that weird. That's just that's just odd. Weird scenario number three, yeah, because it keeps going. It keeps going. They, they didn't stop at weird scenario number two. No, weird scenario number three is that they offered to reimburse people in the UK their driving speeding fines in order to promote burnout to point of impact. Okay, so you're gonna. Are you encouraging people to speed and you'll pay their fines to promote a game? That's exactly what they were thinking until the UK government said that that's wild. Why would you do that? No, you can't do that. And, and obviously it got, it got cancelled. Yeah, it got cancelled, but they tried. And then we get to this last weird situation with BMX XXX where they wanted to boost sales. So they added in all this obscene stuff and all, all the stuff with strippers and that whole storyline that really was no part of it. I mean, look at some of the headlines that were coming out around this time, right? They did not 
intend to make a game that had strippers in it. That was that was not the plan. It was a BMX game with Dave Mirror on it because Pro Skater was really popular at the time. Another game that I loved, and because everyone was on the hype, and and that would have earned the money. But no, add in sex because that will sell. I mean, kind of didn't work, did it? Would I replay the game? No, I'm not. I'm not bothered about replaying that game. Although other people are. There's literally people who do speed runs of this game. Believe it or not. So let me know in the comments, is this a video game that you played? Is it a game that you liked? Is it a game that you defend and think has artistic merit and think is a, an exemplary piece of art? If so, I'd love to know why. I'd love to get into it. Let's talk about it in the comments because I think this is a, a really interesting game that is really part of, of that whole era, you know? The whole jackass, American Pie, everything going too far. And I think this game is a primary example of that. Next, we're sticking with PS2. But we're going with a bit of a weird game that I don't think a, a lot of people played, right? This is called Circus Maximus Chariot Wars. And, and it's literally what it sounds. You raced a chariot round, but you also fought on the back of it, right? Which I found so cool at the time. My, pa my dad was really into Ben-Hur growing up and I used to watch that chariot scene where they all race round. And I was obsessed with the idea of these chariot wars. I still think the game concept stands up. I think it could be something really cool. And I think it's something that I want to see redone. I think I'd love to see a game with this concept done well that really goes into it. And it's got a lot of hardcore fans who really loved it because there aren't that many games where you get to race chariots around whilst killing each other and upgrading your chariots and doing all this cool stuff. I was really into the topic. I think it's a game that... that I really enjoyed. I know it was full of bugs. I know that it's got lots of criticism. I know reviews were really, really harsh towards it. And it was all warranted for the most part. Was it still fun? I thought so. Am I going to replay it? Yeah, I'm going to buy it right now. Let's go. We're almost at the end. And we're going to talk about a game that a lot of people did love. And that got a lot of hype at the time. I remember seeing the first trailer when it came out and just being amazed at it. I mean... Look at some of this stuff that's coming up. I didn't even know you could do some of that stuff, right? However, that ragdoll animation. That ragdoll animation is is the best thing I have ever seen. It's something that I want in every game forevermore. Is, is for them to talk up the AI. To talk about how amazing it is. With an image like that. With a video that shows a ragdoll animation like that. That's what I want in every game going forward. I mean, I remember watching this trailer and just being amazed. I wanted to play this so much. I wanted to be God on that island. I wanted to be that floating hand. I wanted to make those those little monsters talk to each other. And I played both of these games. I mean, the second one got a lot of hype, right? It, it was a good game and people really, really loved it. And people still love it. They still go on about how good this game is. And I want to replay it too, because I think it would be interesting to go back and replay a game I totally sucked as as a kid. I couldn't even do half that stuff it mentioned. I really struggled with it. I don't think I could get past like the third or fourth mission on these games. Um, and I don't know why. It was maybe just because I didn't have the patience for it. It was maybe because I was terrible at gaming at the time. It was maybe because I wanted to get back and play The Sims some more. But I bought both of those games. I didn't complete either of them. In these games, you play as a god, a big floating hand, you have these big creatures, you, you affect civilizations. In the second one, you can actually build a bit more. They're really cool games that I really enjoyed. This isn't a summary of how games work. I think you know that by now. But I think it is a really interesting concept, and I think it's a concept that still holds up, and I think it's a concept that I'd see coming back, and I'd like to see come back, and I'd like to see a third game done done modern? I don't know. What do you think? Do you think it needs it? Do you think it's done? Do you think it's uh, it's over kaput? Or is it something that you'd like to see to see come back in some kind of way? We're on to the last game. We're on to Coliseum Road to Freedom, right? You play as a gladiator. I was really into gladiators at this time. In fact, gladiator might have been one of my favorite films at the time. But you fight for freedom, for glory, for power, Yes, you're fighting as a gladiator. I mean, it's 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 the obvious thing that that that's what you do. But I thought it was really cool. You got to you know cut limbs off and throw them into the crowd and do all this cool stuff as a gladiator and upgrade your gear and and upgrade your skills and and you know for the time the cutscenes looked really cool. The trailer looked really cool and I really enjoyed it. Did other people? Um, 
Yeah, not so much, no. But am I going to replay it? <laughs> Absolutely, I'm going to buy it again. Right now, we've got a list of PS2 games. We've got a PS2 on the bag. Let's get it. Let's purchase it. Let's do it. Let's uh, come back to this, replay some games together. Let me know in the comments which one you want me to play first. And that's it. That's 10 video games I loved as a kid that have disappeared. 10 franchises that aren't here currently, that lie dormant, that hopefully some of them will come back, but most probably won't. And let me know, were any of them your favorite games as a kid? I want to have a conversation and let me know which games you'd like me to play. Are there any that you'd like me to revisit? Is there anything I've missed that you think I should have included? Like, subscribe, do all that good stuff and uh, I'll catch you next time.